Last week I showed you how to weave a cuff, a different way to weave a cuff on the um, silver silk um, jewel loom. And so now I'm going to show you different ways to finish that cuff. Um, it, so the tutorial for last week's will be in the in the description if you want to check it. And I'm sorry that I won't be in chat tonight to post links, but everything is in the description for the videos. And, we'll, and I'll post a blog in the next several days so you can um, get all the information and both videos in the same blog. So let's get rolling on um, our first um, video on our first section on how to finish a um, cuff. I want to show you the first way I finish this bracelet. I use beading wire, and as you can see, the bracelet is finished because this is my prototype. But I use um, 20, 49 strain um, beading wire through it and um, put it through both strands. First of all, to cover the ends, I'm using these um, bead caps. Um, you can get at the Silver Six store that's made just for the pipe chain. And I'll have the link in there. And as you can see on this finished one, I used the, um, I'll just call it black. I think it's rhodium. Sorry, I forgot to check the name. Bead caps on this end. And um, then after I, um, then I used beading wire. And I use 49 or 19 strands, so it's more flexible. Seven strands a little too stiff. And since the pipe chains is a little stiff too, you don't want too much stiffness to your cuff. And in this case, I use the magnetic clasp with um, where I can connect each wire end to it. And I just crimp the wire ends. So I'm sure you can find videos on crimping. Uh, or you've probably done crimping yourself. So just to um, add decorative, um, I put some fire polish beads at the ends too before I did the crimps onto the um, chain. And so that's just like another color story I did with the um, black pipe chain and some fire polish from the um, Jewel Store, Jewel Loom Store and size 11 seed, red seed beads. So that's an easy way to do it. The second way I finished off one of these bracelets is by using point eight millimeter thick nylon beading and knotting cords. So I guess it's similar to um, to Chinese knotting cord. And I actually got this from um, Danielle Wicks. I'm not sure she still has some in her shop. But, um, so what I did was I got this Beadalon elastic cord needle and I thought, I bet this is thin enough to pull this through just to make it easier. Because I had, I knew I'd have a hard time getting, um, the needle in the um, needle in there. Just trying to show you the top of the package. So you can see I already have one in here, and this I made it longer than I needed because we're going to be doing some um, knotting, so we can you know tie it together and have an adjustable clasp. Or you can use like they have these sil silicon beads that you can feed this through instead of making an adjustable clasp. So I have my needle out and I went ahead and put it on the first two beads. As you can see on here, I put, I put the bead cap on, uh, a be and in a couple different beads just to decorate the ends more. And if you accidentally make your, um, cord too short, you know, your uh, design too short, that's an, another way to extend your design so it doesn't look like you accidentally did it. It looks intentional. So I strung on the first two beads 
and I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to go through the bead cap, and then I'm going to go through the pipe chain. I hold it down, it'll make it a little bit easier to push it through, and of course, it might take the bead cap off the other end. So once I get it all the way through, you can see I pushed it all the way through. I um, put the other two beads on. And for some reason, this is not wanting to go right on the bead like all the others did. There we go. Hope it comes out. <laughs> And I'm just going to measure the um, this beading cord, or this knotting cord, to the length that I already have. Because I know I'm going to be trimming some off. I just want to make it easier and um, have longer length. And to be honest with you, the first time I put it through, I did double it, but I made it too short. And then I got to thinking, well, I don't want two strands coming out of each um, thing and then having four strands on each side to make it real stringy looking. So I just decided to use a single strand. But I'm going to double it a little bit to get it through. See, there's a little hook at the end of this, and I'm going to feed this through that little hook. Like for any of you that have used it on elasticity or something, that's what I'm doing here. So I got it on the little hook. Let's make sure you can see that. Okay. Now... I'm going to pull this out. I have to get the bead through the... Wait just a minute, I'm just going to tug on these beads to make it easier. Because oh, that one, I probably should have got a different bead with a bigger hole. Because oh, I didn't have problems with the others, I lost my original bead. There we go. And don't worry, we're going to straighten this out once we get everything in. So right now it's a little messy. So just keep holding your beads together and pulling on the needle. Then once I get to the bead cap again, I gotta tug a little bit harder. And tug this bead over that little hook. And that one has a little bit bigger hole, so. You know, if you don't want to do so much tugging, just use a little bit bigger hole beads. And guess what? I, I should have used bead stuffers at the ends of this. I let my one of my beads fall off. Now, I just want to make these about the same length. So I'm measuring this out, you know, to straighten up the length of these. So you can measure something, just make sure they're approximately the same length on each end. Okay, now that we have the string through, we're going, you know, I got my silver silk um, pipe chain bead caps and a couple beads. I'm going to tie knots at the ends of these to hold the beads in place. Okay. 
So now we're going to put um, knots in the cords. I put, just to show you, I put a um, um, wire guarding at the end. What do you call it? bead stopper? I mean, <laughs> and uh, to hold it in place so it doesn't keep um, sliding through while I'm trying to make a knot. Now you can make these knots with any kind of knotting tool you have. I was trying to think of something that I, you know, I have all of them, but I was trying to think of something that if you don't have a knotting tool, you might have in your house. So I'm going to try this bead knitting needle. Now you can do this with any knotting tool you may have, but if you don't have a knotting tool, I wanted to find something that you might have in your house. Some people have used T-pins, you know, um, thick needles like upholstery needles or something. I just grabbed this um, this knitting needle to see if it would work. So I'm going to stick the tip of the knitting needle in and put it up against the bead. I'm going to tie my knot and gently guide it down the knitting needle. When I get it up against the bead, I'm going to take the knitting needle out and finish tying the knot, guiding the knot down. Okay, it is a little loose there, and on the other side, I made a double knot because that hole is kind of big in the last um, bead, so I'm going to try this again and make another knot over the first knot. And make sure it ties over the first knot. And then I'm going to tighten the knot down. You know, you could even do this maybe with um, uh, make the barrel knots. So now I'm going to adjust this, make sure it's tied up against this so I can do the other end. Let me turn this around. So I got the other end. I'm going to start the knot. You know, like you normally would, went around itself. You know, put the knitting needle in, tighten it, and push it, push it down. Keep pushing it towards the bead, and as you're pushing it towards the bead, take the um, knitting needle the um, point to guide it towards the bead. Some people take another bead and push the knot down so it's uh, against it. I do have a little wiggle room there, but like I said, I wanted to make a stronger knot. Or a double knot. So I'm tying it again. Making sure it stays over that one bead, that one knot, and pushing it down there. Now to make it adjustable. Since this is so, so thick, I'm just I'm just going to guide the wire the lines like this and then we could do some adjusting afterwards. And I'm actually going to use um, let me cut this in half use some more. I'm going to see if the Chinese knotting cord will work good with this. So we're going to do square knots over the Chinese knotting cord. So we take this and, you know, double it over, you know, put it underneath the cords, double it over, and there's just tie a knot in it. I mean, just like one single strand knot, or one single knot. And then we're going to start doing the square knot. So you take, you know, wrap it around. This goes over the cord. 
and it goes under the other cord that's part of that knot. And then this one, it goes over the cord that just came across, so you kind of have a P, but you want to go under the four cords up through the loop on the other side. And then you tighten it up. Now you're going to do the opposite. Now you're going to start on this side, put it over, put this cord over that, take, take these, Take the other cord underneath the four and take it through the loop on the other side. Tighten it up. Okay, now we're going to go back to the, this side over the four cords. Take the the right cord over the, the left cord that came across. Underneath the four cords. Up through the loop. Tighten. Now. It's the right side turn to go over the four cords. And it's going to go under. And then the left cord is going to go under. Well, it's going to go over and then under the four cords. Tighten up. We're just going to do three knots like this. So the left goes over the four cords. The right goes over over the left cord, under the four cords, and then through the loop on the other side. And one more, now it's this tight guy's turn. Go over the four cords, and then the right, left goes over the cord that just came across, and it's gonna go under the four cords through the loop. You know, if this is kind of confusing, just um, look up um, square knots. You'll find a great diagram or you might even find some videos that might explain it if you're not understanding how I'm doing this. Okay, now what we want to do is take our burner and we don't want to um, cut the four cords. We only want to cut the cords we're knotting with. So, or you could take off the ends. I'm going to slice through it, pat it down so it stays there. It kind of burns it into the side there. And pat it down. Okay, now what you want to do now is um, figure out where you want to cut these cords and um, tie on some beads so it doesn't go through the knot. So I'm going to be tightening this on my wrist because you know you don't want your dangly cords too long. So, but you don't want to cut them too short because you want it to be going over your hand too. So. So I'm going to take this and um, so, you know, I, I gently I want to even that up some. I just want to make sure it'll go over my hands since I did some adjusting. And it's still a little bit too loose, so I mean too tight. So you just have to play with it. You don't want to do the finishing until it, you can get it over your hand comfortably. You know, if you're making it for yourself or for the other persons. So, okay, so that seems pretty good. So I'm going to that's about where I'm going to have little dangles that I can grab to tighten it.
what I did first was I went about an inch down from where I decided it would be comfortable going over my hand. You know, I made sure it was about even on each side. And then, you know, if it's slightly off from each other, it's not going to matter. Just make your knots. And with this, I just kind of smoothed it out so I can get through these beads. They have slightly larger holes, but not really big holes. So I just kind of smoothed it out here. Or you could put it um, into a big eye needle or a collapsible eye needle to feed it through. So I just took it against the knot. And take the knot down. If it's not really close to it, um, you know, just like you can see on this one, it's going to slide around. It'll be okay. Unless you're, you know, one of those, per you know, a perfectionist, which I could be at times. As far as my, not, as far as my jewelry goes. <laughs> So I'm just trying to get it as close to the knot as I can because I want a huge gap in there. But a little gap's not going to bother me on the dangles. Then I'm going to do it with this one too. One more. One more knot about an inch down from my adjustable knot. Smooth out the end. I feed it through the hole. You know, you can even use um, seed beads on this part. Probably size 8 or size 6 would work too. Be a great use for using up some of your seed beads or some of your bead soup. Okay, now I'm just going to, um, I mean you could cut it, but I want the Use the thread burner and go down a little bit below, maybe, I don't know, a quarter, an eighth of an inch below um, the knot to burn it and seal it up so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't fray. And you just do the same for all, all the other four. Okay, now try on your bracelet, you know, make sure your beads are all smoothed out, you know, from trying to fiddle with all that stuff. Put on your bracelet and grab the ends and adjust it. And there you go. That's another way to finish off the bracelet. When making the adjustable bracelet, yes, I know. I missed a bead and I saw that when I was editing. Uh, you know, but it's not going to bother me to wear it. <laughs> but I just wanted to point that out. I did see that. but And I don't really feel the need to cut it apart to add it again. So, but. If you noticed it, great eyes.
Okay. Okay, now we're going to finish this cup with wire. And I'm using Beadalong German style wire, 20 gauge. If you want to try the 18 gauge, go ahead. I'm using German style wire because it's like along the lines of half hard wire, so it's a little bit firmer to try to hold the, um, the cuff shape when we get it formed. But um, like the artistic wire or a lot of other craft wires are dead soft or almost dead soft where, you know, you might lose your shape. You know, especially, especially since we can't hammer this with all the glass beads in it. And we're shaping it after we already get the beads in it. That's why I was concerned about it. So I already got one wire through and it went through pretty easily. If you want to try 18 gauge wire, go ahead and try it. I did try 16 gauge and I, I really struggled getting it through. So um, this wire is about 11 inches long for the 6 inch. I think this one was about six and a half inch weave. My wrist is seven and a quarter, so it's going to be a little bit wider than that. But I'm, as you can see, it's just sliding right through. Just like a knife through butter. Okay. So then I'm going to put the, oops, I forgot the bead cap on that one. And we need to put the bead caps on. And I only had silver, I mean, not silver. Um, I only had the rhodium or the black color for the pipe chain and the antique gold. So I thought the rhodium would look a little bit better with this than the antique gold since we had a lot of silver in it. I mean, you can use whatever pleases you. And I picked out some of the beads you know that I had already used it I just I just think it looks nicer to finish it off with the bead next to the end cap so we'll put a bead here on each end I already have a bead where I have the bead stopper now what we need to do is we want to bend the wires toward each other. Make sure your beads on your bracelets all nice and even. So I honestly don't want to leave a gap. I just want to bend it right there on top of the bead. And then we're um, like right in the center on the longer piece I will, I'm going to bend it right in the center and then steep, stop these from sliding around. I'm going to bend those two towards each other. Oops. It's wanting to go its own way. <laughs> okay. And then I'll take that and Bend it upwards. And what I'm going to do is take one side and wrap it around a couple times on, to, on the other side. You can see how I'm just quickly, if you find it easier to hold it. I like using chain, um, bent chain note suppliers because they stand on my way better. Bend it around a couple times. And you can see I probably used a little bit too much wire. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. Trim that. In this end, since that's a little bit less wire, I'm going to use this end to make a, um, a loop because I'm going to build a clasp into this wire. So I put my chain nose pliers right here and then bend and that gives me a little gap to make a loop to hold it in place. Now I'm going to use my six step plier and I'm going to use the third one. And I'll look that up and put it in the notes on how um, 
how big that is. So if you have like, you know, diff ba different mail making pliers or even a marker, your artistic wire, carrot mandrels, you can use one of those to make your loop. So, so I said I want to make a small, the smaller one. So let me get the smaller one up here. I'll show you what I'm doing. So I got the, got it in here. And I'm going to bend it around, twist my plier. So I got that. And I use my chain notes pliers to hold them in place while I wrap my wire around the stem. And so it was um, about two to three times. Then I'm just going to trim the extra off. And I'm going to tuck that end in. And straighten this up some. Just a minute. There we go. So I got a nice loop. Now on the other end, I'm going to wrap a little bit here. A couple times. And this end, I definitely need to um, hold it in place to wrap it. Okay. Some people do use two pair of pliers to wrap it. I just have an easier time using my fingers. I'm just doing it enough to make this steady. You know, there's different ways to do this. I'm just showing you the way I planned for this. Okay. Trim this extra wire off. So you can see I'm wrapped up here. And we're going to use this in, to make like a little um, hook. And before I make the hook... You want to get something to shape your bracelet around. I have this artistic wire and um, what, what do they call it? Um, sizing drum. And when I measured it, my wrist is seven and a quarter inches and it works perfectly for my wrist. But you know, if I was eight inch, I would just go a little bit past it. Or you can like use pill bottles or something. And they even have a round one if you'd rather have a round bracelet. But I'm going to shape it around this so I can figure out where I need to make my hook. So as you can see, I'm going to need to make my hook right in here. So it's going to be a kind of a long hook. And if my bracelet is loose, I don't mind. So I'm going to, oops. You, you also need to decide, do you want your hook to go upwards or downwards? I don't like it digging into my wrist, so I go downwards. And I got this, and I'm going to trim it some. And I'm just going to check it to see how well. Yeah, see, that's still too little. Maybe trim it up halfway. Then I'm going to make a little circle here with my the smallest, which is about two millimeter. If you have, um, see, there you go. So when I put it on my wrist, it fits right in there. And then we can also push that down so it doesn't slide out easily. I mean, if you think it's going to be too wide, you can even put a couple beads on here. So it looks like I could have extended my bracelet out a little bit more for this. I'm actually going to see if I can make it a little bit smaller. Because I don't really like that. <laughs> but 
but you also have to make sure it hooks in. And if you have a problem with it too, what you can do is make two loops, maybe a little bit smaller on each end, and then add your clasp. So I'm just going to add this like that. You know, it's just playing with it until you get what you want. So I got my loop, and I'm going to close it. And we can make sure it closes. If I don't like this, I may end up making a loop. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to make a loop to make a, to add a class too, because I really don't care for that. So, so much for trying that. So you can make your loop smaller too since you're just going to be adding a clasp to it. But since I already made the one loop, I'm going to make it all same size on both sides. See, so I got my loop and I'm going to cut that side off. And you could, before you close the loops, you could have added your class then. I'm going to check and see. You know what I could do? I have some 18 gauge wire here. I'm just straightening it out with my nylon jaw pliers. I'm going to make like a little S hook. I'm going to tip, just curving around till I get a little loop at the back, back. And then, I don't really want it real big. So I'm putting that down, you know, the loop down, and I'm going to take this around like this until it touches the loop. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I have something like a figure eight loop, but I want to make that little, I have a figure eight loop, but I want to make a little loop at the end too, on this side. This you could squeeze it with your nylon jam pliers to work hard in it. It might take several squeezing, but I can already feel it's work hardened. Or you can tap it with your um, like a nylon. Um, hammer on nylon plate or something if you don't want to mar your wire. Then once I do that, I could put this in one end, leave this side slightly open, and and then 
I have a class one side can stay on there all the time and the other side is slightly, slightly open and like I said you can add any class you want to I just quickly made that And here's what it looks like on the drum. I made it slightly too big, but I don't mind bracelets being too big on my wrist. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and different possibilities on how to finish off your loom bracelet, your pipe chain loom bracelets. And we would love to see what, how, what you do with this tutorial. It, it, you know, it would be great to see pictures, post them on the Jewelry Making with Jewel Loom page, the Silver Silk, Silky page. Please tag me, tag Neela, tag Jules in it, you know, by using our names. And uh, we would all three love to see these. And if you have any questions, please ask here in the um, videos, you know, please tag my, my name so I can find it easier. Or you can ask the questions on the... Um, on the Jewelry Make with Jewel Loom page, and I'm sure they won't mind if you ask on the Silver Silk Silkies page also, <laughs> or you can message me on Facebook. Well, um, thank you, and um, hope to see you again soon. Take care.